Hi everyone, welcome to day two, seven two inverse functions and relations. So we're going to continue on uh, looking at the relationships between functions, only today we're going to find the inverse of a function or a relation. So we got to learn what an inverse is. All right, so let's go ahead and define what an inverse relation is. So an inverse relation is simply a set Oops, there we go. A set of ordered pairs obtained by exchanging the coordinates of each ordered pair. So what does this mean? Simply put, it means we switch the x and y values. Okay, easy enough. So if we take a look at this first example, a and b represent relations, okay, and they happen to be inverse relations. Why? Well, if we take a look at the ordered pairs in set a, we've got an ordered pair 1 comma 5. Well, in order to be an inverse, Set B needs an ordered pair of 5, 1, where the x and y values simply switch, and we have that ordered pair. Okay, Back to set A, we have an ordered pair of 2, 6. In order to be inverses, set B would need a 6, 2 ordered pair, which we've got as that second ordered pair. And then finally, we have an ordered pair of 3, 7 in set A, so we need a 7, 3 in set B, which we do. So all of the X and Y values from set A switched positions in set B. Therefore, they are inverses. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this second example or the check your progress. I want you to state the inverse of our relation. So remember, all we're doing here is switching the X and Y values. So go ahead and, and write that uh, inverse relation right now. All right, hopefully we did that, and we should have gotten the set. Instead of negative 8, negative 3, we have the ordered pair negative 3, negative 8. And instead of negative 8, negative 6, we have the ordered pair negative 6, negative 8. And finally, instead of the ordered pair negative 3, negative 6, we have the ordered pair of negative 6, negative 3. And there is our inverse relation. Okay, so hopefully that's easy enough to understand. And now we're going to get into the inverse functions. Okay, and we'll be able to find an inverse function. So let's take a look at the second portion of the page here. All right, so inverse notation. As with relations, the ordered pairs of inverse functions are also related. But this time we have a special notation to represent the inverse of a function f of x. And that inverse notation is simply f inverse. So it's like to this negative 1 of x. Let's write this a little clearer here. All right, so f inverse of x. So we don't say f to the negative 1. It's not a power, all right? It's simply read f inverse of x or the inverse of f, okay? So now we're going to be given a function. So if we take a look at example 1 down below, we want to find the inverse of the function. 
All right, so there's a few steps we need to follow, and that's over here in this box to the right. All right, so we are now going to write the inverse of the function f of x equals 2x minus 4. So following our guidelines over on the right here, step one, we write f of x as y. So we're just going to, instead of have this f of x notation, we're going to write it as y equals. So y equals 2x minus 4. All right. Let's take a look at step two. Step two, just like in our relation up above, we switch the x and y values, okay? So this time we just swap the positions. So now we have x equals two times y minus four, all right? We're sw simply swapping the positions of x and y, okay? The next step is to solve for y. So we can do that. What would be the first step? Well, I need to get y by itself. So we'll add 4 to both sides. x plus 4 equals 2y. y isn't by itself yet, so the last thing we'll need to do is divide both sides by 2. And when we do that, we will get x plus 4 all divided by 2 equals y. Okay, so we accomplished step three, and now our final goal here is to write y as f inverse of x. We have to use the proper notation. So now our final answer is f inverse of x is equal to x plus 4 all over 2. Okay? So hopefully that wasn't too difficult, but we'll go on to the next page and try some more examples. So here we go. All right, so this time, not only are we going to find the inverse of the function, we will then graph it, okay? And we'll graph both the function f of x and its inverse, f inverse of x. All right, so don't forget about those rules from the prior page if you need to look back go ahead and do so, all right? So first step that we're going to do is instead of f of x, we swap the f of x and we call it y. So y equals x squared plus one. And now we switch x and y. So instead of y here, we have x equals, and it's going to be y squared plus one. So how do we get y by itself? Well, hopefully we recognize we need to subtract 1. So x minus 1 equals y squared. And how do we get rid of that power of 2? We have to take the square root of both sides. And what do we have to remember when we take the square root of both sides of an equation? You better remember your plus or minus. Okay? So we will get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 1, and that's all underneath the radical. And then our final step is to use the proper function notation. So instead of y, we have to write f inverse of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. So we found the inverse, but now we need to graph these two functions. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to graph f of x. We should recognize f of x equals x squared plus 1 to be a parabola, okay? So do you remember what the vertex is? So let's see what we remember. So we're going to make a table. All right, make a table for f of x. So remember, with quadratics, the vertex is the opposite of b. x is equal to the opposite of b. I'll make a note. Uh, let's make a note up here. x is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. Well, 
there is no B value, there is no linear term, so X is going to be zero. And when we plug zero into our function, our F of X value is going to be one. So here is our vertex, and then we choose values that surround it for X. So we can choose one and two, negative one, and negative two. And when we plug these values in, when x is 2, we get f of 2 to be 5. And when x is 1, we get f of 1 to be 2. When x is negative 1, we get f of negative 1 to also be 2. And when x is negative 2, we get f of negative 2 to be 5. Okay? So we have our table of values we can go ahead and plot this function. So let's do that and then we'll work on the graph for our inverse. So we've got 0, 1, we've got 2, or sorry, we've got 1, 2, and negative 1, 2, and then we've got 2, 5, and negative 2, 5. So when we graph this, we've got our parabola, I'm a little off with this iPad. Okay. All right, so we've got our parabola there. Okay, so now think back to what we first did at the Check Your Progress and talked about the inverse relationships. All right, how can we come up with the graph for the inverse of f? Because we haven't talked about graphing square root functions yet. That's to come later on in this chapter. So. Since we have our table of values for f of x, we should be able to quickly find a table of values for f inverse of x. And what do we need to do? Simply switch the x and y values. So instead of the ordered pair 2, 5, we now have the ordered pair 5, 2. All right? Instead of the ordered pair 1, 2, we have the ordered pair 2, 1. Instead of the ordered pair 0, 1, we have the ordered pair 1, 0. Instead of the ordered pair negative 1, 2, we get the ordered pair 2, negative 1. I think you guys are getting the, the hint on this one. So finally, instead of negative 2, 5, we have 5, negative 2. Now we know how to plot these points, so let's go ahead and do so. So we have 5, 2, and 5, negative 2. We have 2, 1 and 2, negative 1, and we have 1, 0. All right, so when we're drawing our parabola, our sideways parabola will look something like this. Let's not forget to label what grid or what graph is what graph. I forgot to label our first one, so we'll go back and label f of x, and now our graph is complete. A little side note to talk about with inverse relationships and inverse functions is the graphs of inverses happen to be symmetric about the line y equals x. So if I were to fold my graph along this line, my two graphs would match up perfectly. All right, so that's, that's our little fun fact. Okay, but now we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to ask you, is f of x a function? So think back to first semester when we talked about whether or not um, graphs were functions. Okay, so we had a test that we did, and hopefully you remember, it was called the vertical line test, where if I'm holding a vertical line, up to my graph and only crosses my graph at one point at any given time. So if we're looking at a vertical line through f of x, we could say f of x is a function. It passes the vertical line test. All right, so we can't forget about our vertical line test. It's good to write that down as a quick refresher. Okay, now there's another test I could use on f of x to determine whether or not its inverse is a function, and it's called the horizontal line test. 
And what this horizontal line test tests is whether or not the inverse is a function. Okay, so it, it, the same kind of rules apply as if I put a horizontal line and I hold it up to my graph, my horizontal line should only cross it at one point if the inverse is a function. Okay, so I'm testing right now whether or not f inverse is a function and I'm testing this on f of x. Now f of x fails the horizontal line test. So that should mean my inverse, f inverse of x, is not a function, okay? But now if we go over to f inverse of x, I can go back to my vertical line test to see if my inverse represents a function. Does it pass the vertical line test? And in this case, it doesn't, so it's not a function. So the horizontal line test and on the original inverse matches the same outcome that the vertical line test uh, had on the inverse. So our conclusion is the inverse is not a function. So it's kind of difficult to determine, hey, when do I use the vertical line test versus the horizontal line test? So the horizontal line test is used on the function, or uh, sorry, on f of x to determine if the inverse is a function. Okay? All right. So now I want you to try this last example. Okay? I want you to find the inverse of the function, and then I want you to try to graph the function and its inverse. All right? So go ahead, pause the video, and try this on your own. All right, hopefully you had a chance to try uh, example three. What you should have gotten for f inverse is you should have found that f inverse of x is equal to 3x plus 6 when you all cleaned it up, okay? Then if you used a table of values, all right, um, and I did when I was going through this. Now, keep in mind, f of x is just a line, and we know how to graph lines. It's been a while, but we know how to do it. It's in slope-intercept form, all right? So we've got the point 0, negative 2, and if you plotted everything correctly using that slope, we've got a point of 3, negative 1, and then 6, 0. So your graph should look something along the lines of this over here and then six zero so we've got ourselves a line here all right and then using the fact that to find our inverse we simply switch the uh, x and y values the table we should have come up with for our inverse is zero six negative one three and negative two zero or you might have different points depending on um, what points you plotted for f of x and so our graph would look like the following zero six negative one three and negative two zero and we've got our graph here and again we should notice that if we were to cross our or um, if we were to to fold our graph along the line y equals x, these lines would match up perfectly. And then finally, taking it one step further, these are both lines. They both pass the vertical line test. And f of x passes the horizontal line test, so that means the inverse is also a function. So both of these are functions. All right, so if you had any questions, Make sure you bring those to class tomorrow and have a nice night.